just throw them all. <laughs> well, I think when you when you start out the year, you look at the at the personnel you have available. It doesn't make any difference what what level you're at, whether you're at mixed level or or our level, the at really west level. You take it and try to put the pieces together, the puzzle. It's like a big puzzle, and you've got to find out what kids you have, and you may move a kid from offense to defense and, and around the around the perimeter. Of the, of the scheme that you have, depending on what we've got available to us. And every year, you know, he, he referred to the senior classes. We all love to have big senior classes that have a lot of leader experience and, 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 and uh, you know, a lot of ability. But the bottom line is that doesn't happen every year. So you have to adapt to that. You have to make the, you have to have able to put the kids in the right places. And, and sometimes you don't. You keep moving them around. And I guarantee you what you're going to see out of that. Say us the first week may not be totally what you see out of the fourth week or third week. So, I think I I could put a good perspective, bring a good perspective to this. When I came to Greeley, <clears throat> I came from a 5A school in Colorado Springs, and brought an offense with me that I'd run for many years, had great success with it, didn't see a need to change. Came to the Northern Conference 4A football. It's a little different, a little bit less kids to choose from. Uh, we, we couldn't platoon, didn't have the numbers to platoon. Uh, the system that I was running, I didn't feel like after a year spent in the Northern Conference, took a few lumps that first year, didn't feel like that was going to give us a chance to win or be successful. So to exactly what you said, you've you got to be smart. You've got to know when to change some things or, uh, you know, we, we, we're all veteran coaches, but I don't want to be known as a dinosaur. You know, I want to I want to make the changes when you need to make the changes. I'm not selling our kids short or our program short. But I think now we're in the type of offense that gives us a chance to be successful. And now each year, uh, and I know we're already in the process of doing that, we're tweaking what makes us, what's going to make us a better team this year. Within that same, I'm not changing offenses. I'm not one of those guys that puts a new offense every year. We're stuck, we're sold with what we're doing, but we're looking at ways with our new quarterback this year, our, our new running backs, what we're going to be doing defensively, what's going to, what we think is going to work for us. And so I think that's only good coaching is you've got to evaluate what you have and uh, do your best to get the ball to the right people in the right situation and hope for the best. Do you find yourself at all at some point during the season, and we've discussed this in a different uh, situation before, playing for next season, and then sometimes you find yourself, well, we couldn't afford to play a lot of underclassmen because the drop was so big from what we had from a senior to at most juniors and a sophomore. And then all of a sudden, now it's that junior and that sophomore's turn. So do you find yourself at some point I, maybe thinking ahead a little I bit? I don't really do that too very – in fact, I don't say – I don't do – I don't think that way. Okay. You know, uh, we had 24 seniors last year, and that was a good, good situation. And I think that reflected in how we played and the leadership that we had on, in that year's team. But um, – you know, even when in years when I first got here, we had, I think, seven or eight seniors. And, of course, I needed to be thinking about building and who's going to get playing time. But for me, you know, I think we're all – these guys are all successful coaches. I want, I want a senior-based team. I, want a te I don't want kids to feel like they've been maybe sold out because we're trying to build for two or three years down the road. That may be the case in some, for some of us. But I certainly don't uh, operate that way, and I don't want kids to sense that in any way. I, I, I hope I'm making sense there. Even though when I'm, when I'm short in numbers with my senior class, I still expect them to lead. Uh, we've, we've already this year, we're, we're a little bit lower numbers, and our junior class is actually bigger, and we've asked them to step up. Absolutely, that junior class is going to have to step up because we have a smaller senior class. But I don't really think of it in, in, uh, in that light, really. Jeff, I think you're, you're – uh leadership for the last two years has really been senior heavy and without knowing roster or names or positions to put everybody in all the pieces of the puzzle for 2010 does that leave you going into 2010 asking the same thing for this person that person this person have got to step up into these roles because we have lost the people that, that led us the last Absolutely, Sam. We, we, you know, we just left the field. All of us just got in here from uh, mini camp, and uh, you know, Colton Taylor's not there, and he was our all-state candidate who's going to Western State. And so, 
uh, our backups who were backups last year, we have two seniors, they know that this is their, their time and they've earned the right to be successful at this adventure, which is high school football. And obviously with all the experience at this table, uh, we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't like thrilling, you know, maybe the second most thrilling thing in our world, or so third. The underclassmen know that if they bide their time, their day will come by being good citizens, good students, and being a good athlete. And so, yeah, our, our underclassmen now are so excited. Our, two, our seniors coming back, who were juniors last year, didn't have a big piece of the pie. Uh, they know that this is their time, and they act accordingly. It's kind of amazing, and I know all the gentlemen here will tell you that the growth between junior year to senior year for a kid who's a contributor in the program is phenomenal. They just absolutely uh, have the ability to take it to the next level. Not all of them do, and I don't even mean athletically, but I do mean leadership-wise. And uh, I want to, I want to, uh, a dis I will, just to be honest with you, a couple years ago we were in the throes of an 0-10, and we took our senior quarterback, we sat him down. Now, his father didn't like that, but I don't really care. And so we had to get Colton Taylor, who was a sophomore at the time, some reps in what was obviously going to be a miserable season. And, uh, and well, the that young... Was, that was playing for the future, in a sense. That's exactly right. And so I respectfully disagree with what Mike said, and he can run his program any way he wants, obviously. I've been in that situation. Yeah. But for that year, when we were uh, in the 4A, losing, we were, it was pretty obvious we were playing for next year. Um, I had no qualms doing that. So I, you know, it, it comes down to every season. Now in week two, did we think we were going to be struggling at 0-10? No, no. So we, we gave the senior all the reps we could give him. But there was a time when he had to sit down. He had to. We would have been kidding ourselves. So. Mark, of the five of you sitting up there, I think it's easy to say you lost the core of a very good team that's been good for, I'm going to say, at a How much can you expect from them because the bar has been set so high for those that are above? Well, this is just me, my, the way we think at West, but I don't, I'm not one to lower expectations very much. Um, you know, yeah, the bar is high. Don't know whether we're going to reach as high as we have or not, but one thing that we're going to try to do is keep our expectations where they have been. Uh, our kids uh, deserve and really demand a pretty high level situation. And they're, they work hard for this. Uh, my coaching staff works hard for this. And so it's, it's my opinion, uh, what we, I, don't, I don't really, uh, I will never say to anybody, especially my, my people, or believe that we're going to be a bad football team, ever. Okay. What I will say is I will say, look, we we have some areas where we're going to have to really step up and do a great job with, but expectations for me, I'm I'm, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to have as high of expectation as I can, and I think with young teams, you have to, if you want those kids to rise, if you want them to become as the best that they can be as a football player, as an athlete, as a human being, you got to have high expectations for those kids. So uh, we've talked about this already in our leadership team. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, entering the season uh, with uh, a, a very high expectation uh, to do great things this year. And uh, we're going to try to define our program to those terms. Have any of you ever caught yourself leaving the cupboard a little bare for yourself? The other Leave me by cover. Left the cupboard bare, left the cupboard full for the next Have you ever look back and caught yourself in home? Oh, child, I left the cupboard a little bare here for myself. Mm -hmm. No, really, because I think what, I don't know, my, my, I tend, I agree with Mark, I said, if we're, we're not good coaches here, if we don't have that high expectation this time of year, I mean, if we don't, then we shouldn't be sitting here right now. And we shouldn't be going out there with the young kids. So, high expectations are hard. You, but you look back, but you may leave the cupboard bare, but it's not because of the fact that you did it on purpose is because of the fact that you were playing for this season. You're not playing for next year. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, like Jeff said, yeah, there's times when you get towards the end of the year, and I've only been there a couple of times, but you're playing at the end of the year, and you're going, okay, let's play, let's play a couple of these younger kids to see what they can do and get them, mm -hmm. get them some more playing time. But 
But overall, um, if it happens, it happens. You just got to re- you just got to come in next year and do the best job you can, and that's your job. That's what you're, that's what we're paid for. That's what we're working with kids for. If we don't do that, then we should be gone. Nick talked about reloading. Let's clarify the difference between reloading and rebuilding. Is there a big difference between reloading and rebuilding? Well, to me, reloading is you have a senior class that leaves that were contributors on the field on both sides of the ball, special teams. The next year you come up, those same kids are doing the same kind of activity that the seniors were doing before, the same kind of performance that the seniors, that's just reloading. Rebuilding is, you know, especially if you have a huge senior class and a small junior class like we had last year, and you had some kids that are kind of experienced, but they don't have enough experience, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta coach those kids up. And you got to teach them how to play downhill, and you have to help them uh, get an identity. You know, what kind of an identity are they going to take on? And they don't have to take on the same identity that the seniors had, but they, they need to get an identity. I think the program, if you're in a program,